Welcome to another video. We have a matrix we need to raise to the 100th power. So that means you have to multiply the matrix by itself 100 times. Yeah, nobody expects you to do that. You should not be doing that. You should be writing this matrix in its diagonal form. And as soon as you express any matrix in its diagonal form, raising it to any power becomes child's play, because all you have to do is just do it. So the biggest challenge you're going to face in this problem is if you don't know how to diagonalize a matrix. And I've chosen a very simple matrix. In fact, I've made life so easy that I picked the same matrix that I used when I did the video on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. If you don't know how to find the eigenvalues or eigenvectors, of a matrix, please watch the video because I'm going to use the results from that to answer this question. I don't want this video to be about finding the eigenvalues or eigenvectors of a matrix. I want it to be about diagonalization and raising a matrix to the super big power. Let's get into it. So this is the secret to diagonalization. It is not complicated, okay? To, because this topic could be somehow confusing, but do not confuse yourself. Any matrix, if it is diagonalizable, can be written as P, D, P inverse. And what does that mean? It means, you see this matrix in the middle is a diagonal matrix. And what that means is that every entry in the matrix is zero, except on the main diagonal. That's where you're going to find entries that are not zero. So, for example, if I write a matrix, say 1, 0, 0, 2. This is a diagonal matrix because on the main diagonal, you have the non-zero entries. Everywhere else, you're going to get zero. So whether it's a 2x2 two two or a 3x3, three three, I'm using a simplified version. Now, if we are doing this, you're going to ask me, so if this is D, how do I get these numbers? Well, these numbers are those eigenvalues that you get from the computation. Okay, so the eigenvalues of this matrix A are what you're going to put on the diagonal. Now, how do I know which one comes first? It doesn't matter. Okay, because the D that you have is not unique. Okay, you can switch them. You can put this two here, put this here. The only thing is, whatever eigenvalue you put here, the column must correspond to the eigenvector that is corresponding to that eigenvalue. So I remember that when I did this video before, I got the following results for the eigenvalues. So these were, this is all I need. So all I have to do is create this environment. So watch what I'm going to do. Because these are all the four things you need. Okay? So watch this. My matrix A, which is 1, negative 1, 2, and 4, can be written as, you see the P here is a stack of these two. Just put them side by side inside the matrix. So this is P right here. It's gonna be one minus one, and the other is one minus two. That's P. What is D? It's the easiest and the nicest thing. It is, Remember, I told you, you just need these two. So because I put this on the left, it is corresponding to this. So I'm going to put this two here. And because I put this on the right, the one negative two, which corresponds to this, I'm going to put this three here. Now tell me, what am I going to put? What is this one? Well, it is the inverse of P. Ah, this is narrow. Okay, I'm going to manage it there, and this is going to be 1, 1, 
minus one, minus two. That's it. So let me quickly explain how this one raised to the power 100 is gonna work. Let's just do power two. Let's do power two. Okay, so look, a squared is gonna be this squared. It's gonna be P D P inverse squared. But you see this can be written as P D P inverse times P D P inverse. Now, if we remove the parenthesis and we start multiplying, you see P times its own inverse is just I. That's P times D times I times D times P inverse. Well, D times I times D is just D squared. You see that what has just happened is we have squared just the diagonal matrix. And it's always easy to square a diagonal matrix because all you have to do is go to the diagonal. Where is it? If you want to multiply this matrix by itself, all you're doing is just squaring this and squaring this. If you, if, you mult, if you raise it to power 10, you just raise this to power 10, raise this to power 10. Because if you try to multiply this by itself 10 times, you'll find out that all you're doing is you're raising, you just keep multiplying this by itself and multiplying this by itself. And that's why it is possible to do what we're going to do here to raise it to power 100. So after raising this to its, the power you want, you can then multiply by just these two basic matrices. Let's quickly compute P inverse because we'll need it for this final calculation. Let's know what this is. So here, this is gonna be equal to, well, let's use our shortcut method. What's the inverse of a two by two matrix? It's going to be one over the determinant of the matrix, but what's the determinant of this? So it's gonna be one over negative one times well, we're going to get the adjoint of this. The adjoint of this is going to be, we're going to switch these two and change the signs here. So this is going to be minus two, and this is going to be um, one, and then we're going to switch the signs here. This is going to be one, and this minus one. Okay, and what does that give us? Let's just go this way. Well, this is going to be minus one times this, so this is two, two, minus one, minus one. So it's going to be two, sorry, two, one minus one minus one. Okay, we've gotten our inverse. At this point, I need to raise this to power 100, which means I need to raise this to power 100. And like I explained, you only need to raise this to power 100, and we already know what this is gonna be. So let's write this. So we have this, which is one, negative one, two, four, raised to power 100 is equal to P, which is this, one, 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 negative one, negative two, times the diagonal matrix, which is the matrix of just two, zero, zero, three, two, zero, zero, three, raised to power 100 times the inverse, which we just computed, 2, 1, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1. That's what we get. Beautiful. Okay, so what happens? Let's compute this. We already know that when we raise this to power 100, this is raised to power 100, this is raised to power 100. So I might as well just move it in. So let's write it as two raised to power 100 and three raised to power 100 and just delete this because that's what it means. Okay, so you can leave this as your final answer depending on what your teacher wants or you can do the multiplication. Well, let's try and do the multiplication. Two to the 100. Um, and then if you take this and multiply this, you're going to get three to the 100 to the 100. That's what you get multiplied by two, one, minus one, minus one. Okay. We're going to do one more multiplication. 
We might need to clean up eventually. Okay, let's see what this is gonna give us. Two to the 100 times two to the one is gonna be two to the 101. So this is gonna be two to the 101, rather minus, it's gonna be minus, three to the 100. That's the first part of the matrix. It's gonna be a giant matrix. Okay, and the second part is gonna be two to the 100 minus um, the same thing. It's gonna be two to the 100 minus three to the 100. That's going to be negative 2 to the negative 2 to the 100. Okay, and then the final one is going to be this times this, which is going to be plus 2 times 3 to the 100, plus 2 times 3 to the 100. Ah, that's tight. And... That's the matrix. Now, if you have a calculator that can compute that, that's what you're going to get. Otherwise, that's our final answer. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.